Today we are going to uh, have a quick tutorial on downloading, getting set up and started with Sibelius, which is a wonderful music notation software that you can use for composition, for arrangement, for transcriptions. And uh, the best part about it is that it is free. Um, there's a version of it that's free. So uh, if you're on your computer, then you'll go to Sibelius dot com. That's S I B E L I U S dot com. Don't agree to anything. And then scroll down and you'll see Sibelius first. Download free. And you'll just click the download button. And this will take you to um, this way. You'll, you'll need to make a, an account. Just set up a, a free account if you have an email address. And then uh, you'll download either the Mac or the PC version, depending on what you're using. I'm using a Mac, but everything is, um, there's an equivalency on PC. So once you've downloaded it and installed it, we'll go ahead and open the program. And it's going to play some really cheesy music in just a second. Here we go. take you right to this new score tab which has tons of options for the kind of score that you can start with. Uh, you can also go blank and just add your instruments from there. Um, today let's start with string quartet. So we're just going to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to open up and we're going to leave this part alone because we do want letter page size and portrait. Um, and let's leave it in 4-4 four, four time. See, we could change it. We could say, actually, we want to come in 6-8. But let's, let's stay in 4-4 four, because four, it's a great time signature. And we'll go down here and let's do a tempo text. Let's make it allegro. Uh, first movement of a string quartet. Very traditional. And then we have to decide what key we want it to be in. And I've been digging um, E minor a lot lately. So let's put it in E minor. You don't have to have a title for it at this point, but if you do, you can enter it in. Uh, let's call this piece Leonard and Glenda. These are my dogs. You would write in your name here. And then just click Create. Once you have opened up your score, it's going to automatically take you to your keypad. And this is where you'll get all your different note values, your accidentals, articulations, um, rests, down bows, up bows, etc. Right? So, um, from here, it's just a matter of what you want to experiment with, what you hear in your head, uh, what your ideas are for the music. And sometimes all you have to do is put a single note down and then, uh, you know, go from there. It's helpful for me oftentimes to uh, build an opening harmonic chord that sort of gives me an idea of the key that I'm working in. So this is E minor, right? Which, I mean, we could be in G major. It's one sharp, but we said E minor. So let's build, a, let's build an E minor chord. Let's make our first measure two half note chords. Uh, so you're just going to click on the note value that you want, and then you'll drag it over to the instrument that you want to put it in. So let's start with a nice, beautiful E in the cello, right? Let's build this chord up. So let's put an E also in the viola, and then let's do the third and the fifth in the violins. So the third of an E minor chord, think about that for a moment, is G. And the fifth of an E minor chord, I'll give you a minute to think about that, is B. So we just have a, a nice root position tonic chord here to open our, our string quartet, right? And then if we want to do that again, let's say maybe we want to change the inversion. So that means writing the same chord but with a different note at the in the bass. So we have to change 
the cello note, let's go and put the third in the cello now, put the G in the cello. We will, uh, let's leave the E in the viola and let's switch it up here to put the B in second violin and then another E in first violin. So we have a, a first measure. We have two half note chords. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the right arrow on my keypad, I'm just gonna click that once, and that makes me it so that I'm no longer putting notes down and I can move the score around as I wish. Um, and if I go back here and I click the first note in any part, doesn't matter, and then I press the letter P on my keyboard, it's gonna play, so we can listen. Wow, pretty cool, right? And even sounds sort of like the instruments. So from here, we can say, all right, let's have this string quartet open with a, uh, a melody in the viola, okay? So once again, I'm clicking the right arrow on my keypad until I'm in a, a measure that doesn't have any notes yet. And then we, I'm gonna say, you know what? Let's start with, uh, let's have this melody start with eighth notes, right? Um, kind of here in, here in eighth notes. And then from here, I'm actually just gonna use the letters on my keyboard pad instead of writing in each individual note. It's faster for me if I say, um, oh, that's second violin though, we said viola. Um, so we'll go click here and then once again, click on our eighth notes. And let's see, um, I kind of hear, this G F sharp, G F sharp, and then let's do quarter uh, B B. And from here, you can keep writing your melody, or you can write the other parts around it as you wish. Um, let's do another uh, two measures before we add in the other parts. Um, so. If we want to go back and hear what that sounds like, so we'll just go, we'll go all the way back to the beginning and we'll press P. Okay, so then from here, just, you, you can let your imagination guide you. Uh, I think we'll skip stick with quarter notes. Uh, let's throw in a, a nice accidental here. And then, and we'll end on. Yeah, we'll go up. Why not? Okay. We're fun. So let's listen to this. Okay, so it's just a sort of randomly put together melody. And from there we can add in some other parts. So let's look at what our chord structure might be, right? We know our first measure is in E minor. And then looking at these notes, G, F sharp, G, F sharp, E, B. I think we're probably still in E minor here, right? So that'll inform how we write our other parts. In fact, we could even say, let's copy. So select the whole measure, Command C on the Mac or whatever the equivalent is on a PC. And then just go over here and we'll put the cello part, same thing, right? That'll, we know that that'll at least work harmonically and we can start from there. Um, and then from up here, why don't we go, uh, let's give it a little bit of rhythmic texture. So, um, what if we do quarters, but we, we do every other beat in second violin, um, and we'll do, and so sometimes when you hit the note on your keypad, it'll select the, um, octave that's closest to whatever note came before and you just pull it down and then if I want maybe I want that to be a double stop so I think I want that to be a fifth 
So I'm actually just going to tap the number five on my keyboard and there we have it. And I want that to repeat. So I'm going to select that rest and that quarter, copy, paste it in. Okay. There we go. And then what if we say, let's, let's have, um, the first violin playing a harmony to the viola part. So, um, what I did was I copied and I pasted it in. So right now we have the exact same notes, but that gives me the rhythmic structure I want to work with. And then let's just change it to, um, um, yeah, we'll keep, we'll do B, 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 B. And then if we have E, B, then How about we try this? Let's see how this sounds. Ready? All right. So we have sort of a dirge-like thing going on here. Um, and we have uh, two whole measures. And so then we'll come over here and we'll look at the these four notes in the melody. So what's going to give it away here is that we actually have the outline of a triad, right? B, D sharp, F sharp. And let's think again, we're in the key of E minor. So B, D sharp, F sharp, or B major chord is actually the five of E minor. So this, it's very reasonable to assume that this measure is in uh, a the harmony, the five harmony, B major, those are the notes that we'll use to construct um, the parts around it. And again, this is based very much on uh, Western tonal music. Um, and you don't have to abide by these rules. It's just a place to start. But if you hear something specific, then you should write that. These aren't really rules. They're just, um, they're, it's like a recipe. Who really follows recipes, right? You read the recipe and then you go, you know what? I don't really like pecans. I'm going to use walnuts instead. Except who would ever substitute walnuts for pecans? Because pecans are way better. But I digress. So let's continue with a, a similar pattern that we had going. So um, just to keep our rhythm going here, I'm going to copy and paste this again. But now, knowing that we are looking for the key of B major, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to make these cello notes the 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 we're going to call them bass notes, even though they're in the cello because they're the base of a chord, reflect a B major chord. But I'm also going to look up here and I'm going to go, you know what? That first note, a passing tone, is a C. But it might sound kind of funny if I put a B in the bass there, right? But we're going to try it out anyways, and we it may be this beautiful moment of tension and then relief, right? So we're going to do B, and then instead of putting the D sharp here, because it's already in the um, the melody, let's just have two Bs. Let's have two Bs. And then, um, let's see, do we want second violin to continue its rhythm again? Probably. Let's do same rhythm, and then we're going to do, we're going to follow the best voice leading we can here. So, we're in B, so we can keep these Bs, right? And what I want to do is actually just lower this to a D and then make it a D sharp. Same here. All right. And then how about, uh, we don't want the, uh, we don't necessarily need, a, uh, I think a harmony to this because it's, it stands, it stands pretty well on its own, this strong arpeggio. And we don't want to cover that up by harmonizing every note of that. So I think, for um, first violin, we can imitate the, um, let's imitate the rhythm of the first measure and um, this is, uh, we could do something kind of fun here. We can, um, so it's sort of an imitation here just within a different key, right? B and uh, and F sharp. So now let's listen to this much. All 
All right. So as it turns out, I think that dissonance is really neat. It gives it that moment of interest rather than everything just being totally within the key, right? Because we, we don't really have a lot of passing tones going on here other than that C. So it sticks out and it's pretty special, isn't it? Okay. And then here we have... So E, E, D, E, F sharp, B. So we're probably pretty close to back in E minor here. There's a few different things we could do harmonically. Um, and in fact, we could split the measure. We could say the first half of the measure is going to be one chord and the second half of the measure is going to go back to E minor. So let's figure out what other chords might incorporate these notes in E minor. The first that comes to my mind would be A minor, um, which would be the notes A, C, and E, or A major, A, C sharp, E sharp, either are options in a minor key. Um, let's actually go with, let's try A major. Let's try an A major. So, um, We'll do the same thing we did before. The cello is not getting much excitement yet, but this is just the beginning. Everyone will get get turns, right? And um, so we keep going lower and lower and lower in the cello, but it's just the first half is going to be A mi major, and then we said we're going to go back to E minor, right? But what if we go all the way down there? That'll be kind of dramatic, right? And then let's continue our pattern here, and if we're going to do A major, we're going to want to bring that back up to an E, and this down to an A, because those are both notes in the chord. Alright, and then we're actually missing our third still, so it sounds like that's going to have to come in first violin. Uh, and if we keep our pattern, what we would do here is we would mimic the, um, we would mimic the rhythm of the melody and write something uh, in harmony here. So, in, in we have to find notes that uh, either are within A major or sound good as passing tones. So E works, but again, we'd, we may need to establish the A a little bit, the tonality of the A by using of the third. So we can do that this way, and then we'll see how that sounds, and then we have to think E minor again, and that's pretty E minor-y, and let's make sure we change our final note here. Okay, four measures we have, let's see how they sound. All right, so this is this is sort of just one way of approaching writing some music, right? Um, this is pretty much based on understanding, the, you know, how chords work and stuff like that. But you can really write anything, um, and it is it it will be your composition. Um, I sometimes like to start from a place of more structure and then move away from that. Um, so I hope that this gives you the, um, the info that you need to get started using this program. There's a lot of stuff up here, right? And I wouldn't worry about any of that to begin with. I would just get into a score, start writing some notes, start listening to how things sound, and then you can ask me any questions you want from there. Um, so please, let me know if this is something you're interested in pursuing further, and I would particularly love it if you do download and do this, if you could send me a 4 or 8 or 12 bar composition. It doesn't have to be string quartet. It can just be for violin. Viol it can be for any instrument at all. So I can't wait to see what you come up with.